Benito Mussolini, hero or villain. In April of 1945, mobs of people kicked, spit on, and mutilated a corpse, and so ended the life of Benito Mussolini. Born on July 29, 1883 in Italy, Benito Mussolini was an astute boy, easily passing all his school exams. By 1901, Mussolini acquired a teaching diploma and began working as a schoolmaster. In 1902, he moved to Switzerland to escape military service, but returned to work off his compulsory two years of national service. In 1909, he became an editor for, for the socialist newspaper, The Class Struggle, and later a journalist for the socialist newspaper, Avanti. This defined his career as an anti-war socialist. Later, he would come to contradict himself. His father, Alejandro Mussolini, was a political activist and inspired Mussolini to become one himself. He walked in the footsteps of his father and became a socialist. However, in 1919, disgusted by the inability of the socialist, Mussolini spearheaded the founding of a new party with a new political system. The system, fascism, was defined as a system that emphasized the ideas of nationalism and militarism that prohibited political opposition. Fascism helped unite Italy, spawn agriculture, roads, and public programs. It was designed to strengthen Italy as a whole. However, in the process, the freedoms of speech, press, and political equality were taken away from the Italian citizen. Thus, fascism was a double-edged sword, benefiting Italy but hurting it as well. Mussolini created fascism to become more powerful. At the time, the ideals of fascism were appealing to Italians, thus helping Mussolini achieve his dictatorship. Under the guise of helping Italy, he was free to do as he pleased, to enhance his own power at the expense of the Italian people. The Italian people supported Mussolini because they believed he acted for the benefit of the people. Mussolini, a member of the Italian parliament in 1921, accomplished his rise to prime minister with help from the black shirts. His armed supporters who fought and wrecked havoc among the people who opposed Mussolini. As Mussolini's power grew, their tactics grew more violent. The black shirts used intimidation and murder against Mussolini's opponents. Partly because of the black shirts, Mussolini had immense support and little opposition. Mussolini killed anyone who stood in his way, such as prominent socialist leaders. When a socialist failed to keep Italy calm, Mussolini used this opportunity to triumphantly march on Rome in 1922. Soon, the tragedies of a fascist Italy would commence. Under pressure, King Victor Emmanuel III of Italy made Mussolini the Prime Minister, inviting him to form a new government in order to avoid a civil war between the socialists and the fascists. This move helped Mussolini achieve his first step towards dictatorship. He was in a position to pass laws such as the SIBO election law, which would give 66% of the seats in the Chamber of Deputies to whatever party won 25%. Because of his appointment, Mussolini could easily remove all aspects of democracy. Mussolini and the fascists were now in total control of the government. As Prime Minister, Mussolini affected all parts of Italian life. The media was repeatedly censored until all freedom of press was removed. Nothing could be said that was negative towards him and fascism. The news could only report on the accomplishments of Mussolini. The media became excessively pro-fascist and biased toward Mussolini. Being in charge, Mussolini made several treaties. One of his greatest triumphs was the Lateran Treaty of 1929, which established Vatican City as an independent state, along with pronouncing the Catholic Apostolic Roman religion the official state religion. Before this accord, the Italian government did not recognize the Catholic religion. Since the majority of Italians were Catholics, they were ecstatic over this treaty. Mussolini revealed his talents of being a great manipulator by aggrandizing himself via the Lateran Treaty despite his great abomination towards the Catholic religion. Additionally, Mussolini also took credit as the man who made the trains run on time, since the trains did run more efficiently during his reign. The railroad system had been severely damaged in World War I, but was almost fully repaired during the socialist era. As Mussolini and his fascists stepped in, they 
finish the restoration of the system and claim this achievement. As Prime Minister, Mussolini benefited the Italians in varied ways. Mussolini helped the common people by promoting general welfare. He initiated many projects such as the Battle for Grain, which founded thousands of farms by draining the pestilent Pontine marshes. This helped Italy become more independent from foreign products. He also established the Gold for the Fatherland project, which encouraged people to give jewelry for Italy, which would fund more projects for the people. Furthermore, Mussolini gave frequent cash flows to peasants, enabling them to ameliorate their lives. Under analysis today, historians like Professor Anthony Cardoza from the Loyola University of Chicago stated, um, I always, it, it depends on what you mean by people. Uh, I, if, if you think of the people as the nation, then he wanted a strong nation, and he wanted this, uh, a strong nation meant a modern, strong state. Um, and some of his projects to achieve that helped the people, but his purpose wasn't, I don't think his purpose was to help the people. Controlling Italy was not enough, and under the excuse of helping the country, Mussolini attempted to expand his domain. His goal was to gain land for Italy, making him even more powerful. Mussolini quenched this thirst for land by declaring war on Ethiopia in October of 1935. Though many men died during the chaos of the poorly organized war, Italy was able to defeat Ethiopia in May of 1936 by using chemical warfare, modern weapons, and airplanes. Mussolini's bellicose actions led to trade sanctions, and the ending of general agreements with Great Britain and France reached after World War I. However, Mussolini did not care about this, and began to halt trade with other countries. He tried to make Italy more independent of foreign influences. This was his foreign policy. Mussolini lauded the conquering Ethiopia. Having acquired a taste of conquest, he yearned for more. To fulfill his desires for more power and land, he signed the Pact of Steel with Germany in 1939. During this time, trouble was brewing between Germany and the other nations in Europe. A war was imminent, and Mussolini was cognizant of this. Though signing this treaty would involve Italy in World War II, Mussolini did so anyways, putting his own goals ahead of the citizens. On September 1st, 1939, Germany invaded Poland, initiating World War II. Because of the Pact of Steel, Italy was dragged into the conflict soon after. Italy allied with Germany, but was treated as more as a burden. This was due to the fact that Italy was ill-prepared. Italy surrendered to the Allied forces on September 16, 1943, 13 days after the Allied invasion of Italy. And by this time, Italy was left in ruins. The cause, the dictator's avarice for supremacy. Mussolini was removed from his position as prime minister and jailed by the king. The Germans rescued him, only to have him lead a puppet nation. In 1945, Italian Protestants captured and shot Mussolini. His body was hanged for all to see. Being allowed total freedom, Mussolini did as he pleased because people believed he would help Italy. Instead, Mussolini's thirst for power came at the tragic cost of the freedoms and lives of the Italians. He destroyed the progressive democracy that Italy had fostered and set Italy back decades, preventing improvements to the Italian government. Mussolini's story is one of tragedies and triumphs, of a man who brought Italy not only to his apex, but also to his nadir by World War II. La parola d'ordine è una sola. Categorica.